In this lesson about IUPAC organic chemistry nomenclature, you're going to learn how to name molecules with the ester functional group. The ester functional group has a carbonyl carbon, so a C double bond O, and that carbonyl carbon is also joined to an alkyl group, as well as an oxygen, and then that oxygen is joined to another alkyl group. The most important thing that you need to remember about esters is that you always, always base your name on the chain that's connected to the carbonyl carbon, the C double bond O. You're never going to pick the carbon chain that's connected to the oxygen to form the basis of your name. The longest carbon chain that forms the basis for your molecule's name is often called the parent structure of the molecule. So in this case, for an ester, the parent structure is the longest carbon chain that includes that C double bond O or carbonyl carbon. You've got to include that carbon in the number of carbons in your chain. Then what you do is start off by naming that chain as a plain alkane. So let's do an example. This ester has five carbons, including that C double bond O. So the parent structure name is going to be pentane. The next step is to add the correct functional group ending to the name. So the ending for an ester is O8. O-A-T-E. We're going to drop the E from pentane and then put these pieces together to get pentanoate. The word pentanoate literally means, hey, I have a five carbon chain and one of the carbons in that chain is the C double bond O of an ester functional group. To finish off the name, we need to tell our reader what is connected to the oxygen atom of the ester, that other part of our ester functional group. First, let's count the carbons on that part. So in this example, there are two. We're going to name this part as an alkyl substituent. So to do that, we're going to take the name for a two carbon chain, which is ethane, and we're going to take the ane off of it and add il, yl. So that becomes an ethyl substituent. We're going to place ethyl in front of pentanoate with a space in between. So ethyl pentanoate is the full name. And that space is actually really important. The IUPAC rules are very specific about when they do and do not allow spaces to be in the official name of a molecule. And the ester functional group is one of the situations where you do and should use a space. The space signifies that the ethyl group is special and setting it apart signifies to the reader that it's connected to the oxygen part of the ester. Let's name one more ester just to make sure we understand all of these rules. So here's our next ester example and right away we know we have to look for that C double bond O carbon and we're going to count the longest chain we can find including that C double bond O. So there are six in this example. Six carbons is a hexane. So we drop the E on hexane and we add our ending to get hexanoate. Now that we have hexanoate we can look at the other side what's connected to the oxygen part of the ester. So on the oxygen part of the ester we have a cyclohexane. So we have to name that as a substituent. So we drop the A-N-E and we add Y-L to make it a substituent name. So it goes from cyclohexane to cyclohexyl. We're going to put that in the very front of the molecule with a space after it. So we get cyclohexyl hexanoate. Thanks for joining me for this lesson. If it helped you out, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Happy studying!